Hey guys, what's up? This is Kazi from cleverprogrammer.com where you learn to code smarter. So here we are finally finishing up our rock, paper, scissors. Thank God I can say it correctly finally. I'm so sorry. I've been calling it tic-tac-toe the whole time. I don't know why I keep calling it that, but hopefully in this entire video, I'll say rock, paper, scissors. And if I say tic-tac-toe, I'm probably talking about rock, paper, scissors. So with that disclaimer out of the way, Let's go ahead and talk about the solution of rock, paper, uh, scissors. Hopefully you guys got to try it. And um, yeah, so let's just get right to it. So here we have the game open and I have the solutions here for you guys. Now, having the solution here for you guys is great, but what I wanna do is I wanna walk you through it one step at a time, okay? So let's go ahead and walk through it. All right, choice to number. So if you did the previous problem, the Usain Bolt video that I made, which is essentially you get a person and you have to number them and which place they get. So if I give you Usain, you give me back one. If I give you me, you give me two. If I give you Kazi, you give me back three, right? So let's apply that same thing directly here. So given a choice, we wanna convert it to a number. Okay, so let's say that we were given a choice. Whoops, sorry about that. Okay, so let's say we were given a choice like rock. You wanna give me back zero. If you're given paper, you wanna give me back one. Now certainly you can say if choice equal equal rock, right? Choice is coming from here, which is the function. And if choice equal equal rock, then return zero. You can certainly do that. But a better way to do it is since we know we have a relationship between two things, we can use the key value pair technique. So the way that I would write the solution is I would say RPS dictionary, and I would say if it's rock, give me zero. If it's paper, can't type. Uh, paper, goodness. All right, here we go. And if it's scissors, give me back two. All right, and then what we wanna do is we wanna say return RPS dictionary and index it by the choice passed in. So for example, if choice is rock, it goes to this dictionary, uh, RPS dictionary, it indexes it by rock, so it goes and looks at this key and it returns a corresponding value. So this whole thing evaluates to zero, okay? So that's essentially the idea. And since we're declaring a variable right here and then using it right down below, and it's we don't really need to define that as a variable and we can just put it here directly. But just for reading purposes and making it easier for you guys to look at, I'll leave that up there, no problem. Again, I can I can do the same technique for this one. Instead of having a bunch of if else if type of conditions, we can have this scenario here. And I wanna reverse the keys and values here. Okay, so if you give me zero, you give you get back rock. If you give me one, you get back paper. If you give me two, you get back scissors. So that's essentially what, we do, what we're doing here. And this function expects a number between zero and two, including zero and two. So this is pretty straightforward. It will, it'll evaluate to the rock, paper, scissors, okay? This is why the function is called number to choice. It takes a number and converts it to a choice. All right, how do we randomly generate the computer choice? Well, that's, uh, you know, thanks to the random module that we imported here, we can use that to actually do this problem. We can say return random.choice and random.choice takes in some input like this, like a list, so we can go rock paper and scissors. Now make sure your spelling is correct everywhere because if you are not consistent with your spelling of scissors or rock or paper, your program might not work 
because it's expecting specifically those things, right? If I open up a terminal and I go and open up Python here and, and we check what that does, right? So let's do import random and let's do random dot choice and pass it a list of things like A, B, and C. Let's see what it does and let's keep running it. So hopefully you're getting the idea that it randomly picks something. It's not just picking one thing, it's randomly picking between those three choices. So just like that, you wanna do rock, paper, scissors because when the computer is playing, he's randomly picking between rock, paper, and scissors, right? So this is a simple one line solution. Now this is where the meat of the project is. And this part is pretty tedious because you have to write a lot of if else, if else, if else type of conditions. I'm gonna show you a cool way to bypass that, okay? So I have example code here for you and this should be pretty self-explanatory. Okay, if, if so you pass this function human choice and computer choice. If human choice was rock and computer choice was paper, well then paper beats rock and you increment computer score by one. The reason why we're saying global variable is because we wanna specify we're using these variables here outside of the functions and those are the ones we want to increment, okay? Those are the ones we want to change. If you don't do the global variable thing and then you change that, you're only going to change the computer score within the function, but once you leave the function, it's gonna be the same. So for example, if I don't use global and I do this computer score plus equals one, inside of the function, it might, computer score might be one, okay? Computer score might be one inside of the function, but when you like go outside of the function and you print computer score, it'll say zero, okay? So by saying global, we're saying, hey, that's the exact variable we wanna use, and if I change it, I know what I'm doing. I, I wanna change it everywhere, okay? Generally, you wanna avoid using globals, but for now, I want you guys to be, you know, just use globals, it's fine. Uh, the reason why I say you want to avoid that is because then you can have, like, if you have really big pieces of code with thousands of lines or hundreds of lines, uh, you don't want global to be changing, like, between two functions, like, between if you have two, three different functions, if they're changing it, if they all have access to the same variable, they might be changing it in a way you don't want. So you might want to give all of the functions its own separate variable so they don't like have a collision with each other, okay? That's kind of the reason. So, okay, that's a little bit behind choice result um, and what it takes in as inputs and how we can use that. But instead of coming up with a lot of if else if statements, here's a nice little solution that we can do. So essentially we can say, hey, if human choice, um, this is, it's a weird trick, so sometimes I have to see if I can remember it as well. If you take the difference between human choice and the computer choice, and this is where the choice to number functions come in handy, because what we wanna do is we wanna take their numerical difference. You can't take a difference of strings, right? Like you can't do hello, or, or rock here minus paper, you can't do that. So we wanna make sure that these are numbers. How can we do that? We can say uh, human number is equal to, uh, let's call our function choice to number function. And since we already have the human choice, we can just pass it in that human choice and it'll return it as a number. So for example, if the human was rock, it'll get thrown into the choice to number function and that'll convert it correctly. And so this whole thing will evaluate to zero. Okay, so let's leave it like that. And we're gonna say computer number is equal to choice to number function and give it the computer choice. Okay, pretty simple. 
so we have the computer number human number now we can take the difference we can say human number minus computer number and if they're and if you take their difference and you modulo it by three and you get back one if you mod something by three you'll create a world where the only possible numbers are zero one and two okay so for example just to play around sometimes playing around with it is, is a very good idea instead of doing all this theoretical knowledge sometimes just play around with it so like let's do zero mod three let's do one mod three let's do two mod three let's do three mod three let's do four mod three let's do 101 mod three let's do some random number mod three and as you can see here the only numbers that we're getting are zero one and two you're creating a world of only zero one and two numbers so modulo lets you wrap things around which is kind of nice because we only have a, we have rock paper and scissors so we want to be able to go zero one two zero being rock one being paper two being scissors and then the next one the next number we want instead of it being three which is not in our list we want it to be zero again so we want it to essentially be like zero one two zero one two zero one and two so zero corresponds to rock one corresponds to paper this corresponds to scissors then this corresponds to rock this to paper this to scissors okay this ensures that we never get a number that doesn't map to one of our existing things okay like essentially what we don't want is this because when it tries to look up three and four and five and six it won't get anything in our database or our dictionary that we have so we're gonna say take the difference and mod it by three. We know for sure that we're gonna get some number like zero, one, or two. If the number is one, then computer wins. So basically what we say is computer score plus equals one, or you can write it explicitly like computer underscore plus one. Um, we can say else, human score is equal to human score plus or uh, plus one and we need to have one last condition that would be if what if they have the same choice so if human number is the same as the computer number then maybe we just want to print tie and do nothing else okay like we want to we don't want to increment any scores we don't want to do anything we just want to print a uh, tie that's it okay so yeah all right so this trick is a little weird but essentially what it allows you to do is it takes care of all the possible scenarios instead of you having to write nine different conditions or six different conditions i think it would be six because you have three so three factorial so instead of writing six different possible situations like rock versus paper, paper versus scissors, scissors versus rock, and writing all those if-else-if conditions, this allows you to write, like capture it all in just these three lines. Uh, the logic, I, have, I put some notes here at the bottom so you can kind of understand how the logic of it works, okay? So let's say that uh, zero is rock, one is paper, and two is scissors. If you do rock minus scissors mod three and check if it's equal to one, essentially what happens is rock is zero, scissors is two, zero minus two evaluates to negative two. Negative two mod three gives you back um, a one, as you can see here on this left hand side. Okay, so if I did negative two mod three, you get back a one. Okay, and one equals one, so it goes rock wins. And it's true, rock would win, even if you just visually look at it. Then we have the scenario with paper versus scissors. So paper is one and, uh, or actually this should be, it should say scissors here, I'm sorry. So paper versus scissors. 
So you have one minus two, right? Paper is one, scissors is two, as you can see here. One minus two mod three, let's check if it gives us one. Two equal signs mean check if it's equal to one. Then one minus two, that gives us a negative one, right? This gives us a negative one. We mod it by three and negative one mod three gives us two. We check if two equals one. Since two does not equal one, we give the win to the other side. So we give the win to the right-hand side. In this case, the right-hand side is computer and the left-hand side is the human choice, okay? So if the mod is ever equal to one, then essentially what we're saying is that the human wins. And if the mod is not equal to one, then we can say that the computer wins. Okay. Let me just check this against my solution code that I have. And yeah, that's kind of what it says. It goes, Hey, if it's equal to one, then computer wins. Otherwise the human wins. Okay. So let's go back up here. This looks good. This looks good. And yeah, I think most of the code here looks good. Now let's first test our code. Let's run this guy here. What's the error? Oh, we would pass in number, right? Cause that's our argument now. Okay. So we passed all the test cases. Let's see if the game runs. Okay, you picked paper, the computer picked rock, so you win, perfect. We both picked rock, so it was a tie. Let's do scissors. Um, yep, scissors beats paper. Okay, so there you guys go. The game is now working. I have shared the link with you guys, so you can actually go play it there. And if you wanna, try again now to try to solve it after looking at my solution, see if you can now try to solve it without looking at the solution. So I'll have the project, uh, uh, the problem there for you guys. So you guys can actually try the problem on your own. And I'll also have the solution there for you guys. And you guys can just hit save at the top left here. And then it'll give you a link. And you guys can just share that link with anybody that you want. And so then you can share this with your friends, family, whoever. Okay, guys, hopefully that explains it. You guys had fun doing rock, papers, and scissors. And the next project, what I would like to do is build a text messaging app. So we'll have an app which can send out texts to other phones. All right. All right, guys, take care. Have a good one. I'll see you guys in the next video.